Hi, this is Daniel Paluzic with the VMware Cloud Provider Solutions Engineering Team. I'm here today to talk to you about VMware vCloud Director 10.0 and what's new. What are the new available options within this new release? Let's start off with the user interface. In this release, the provider and also the tenant UI is functionally uh, equivalent to the previous Flex interface. So with the previous release, we had some of the provider UI functions there. Now with this release, this should be functionally uh, equivalent to what we saw in the Flex interface, allowing us to use this new Clarity framework, having that intuitive experience, multi-site management, and also plugin management. The other thing I want to kind of call out is the Swagger UI. And I think this is really important for new cloud providers and new tenants that really want to understand how to automate functions inside of vCloud Director. If you go point your browser to slash API, uh, Explorer, and then a tenant or the provider context, this gives us an intuitive path of understanding what's available, what can I do, and what can I learn from actually consuming and automating functions from a self-service perspective, but also looking at this and guiding on available objects within that. The next thing I want to talk about is provider VDC and NSX capabilities inside of a self-service function. Previously, we had uh, PVDCs or provider VDCs that were backed by NSXV uh, or some kind of dedicated networking capability. With NSX, uh, excuse me, with VCD9, we introduced T functionality for a provider VDC. We can consume logical switches and use those on an on-demand basis. Well, within 10.0, we introduced NSXT UI functionality. And this is the first phase of the self-service capabilities for NSXT inside of vCloud Director. And what's great about this is we can provide edge capabilities, edge firewall services, IP address management, and so forth. And there, there's gonna be a lot more coming back uh, in the future here. But one thing I do want to call out is everybody is really discussing, you know, how do I transition from NSXV to NSXT? It's not an all or nothing proposition, right? So I can have a PVDC that is backed by V, a PVDC backed by T, and we can expose OVDCs that the tenant uses that provides that virtual network service capability. And the tenant really just gets that experience of I'm consuming those services at the end of the day. vCloud Director is taking care of that heavy lifting on the back end and making sure everything is taken care of. So next thing I want to talk about is central point of management or what I'd like to call hosted private cloud. And what's great about 10.0 is we've provided what I'd like to call a 2.0 version of this, a wizard-driven catalog of CPOM and detecting how proxy connections come through. And for those of you that aren't aware of the CPOM uh, functionality, we can have dedicated vCenters here that are separate from my provider VDCs that are instantiated as what I'd like to call or SDDCs. So these SDDCs are shared out and exposed to vCloud Director, and vCloud Director then can share this to a tenant user and an organization as a dedicated vCenter object. And VCD provides the proxy access for that accessibility to that vCenter. I don't have to go terminate a VPN or provide direct connect connectivity. That's already taken care of because the VCD cells are typically web-facing or internet-facing and they're providing it in a secure manner. The next thing I want to kind of talk about is policies that are introduced in here. And some of the new policy capabilities is we have placement policy and sizing policy. And what I'd like to talk about on the sizing policy is these are kind of what I consume as guardrails. And what I mean by that is a provider can actually set a standard that says, how do I actually want to approach and provide these manageable guardrails from a reservation, CPU, memory, 
perspective? Do I want to place limits? Do I want to guarantee reservation? And this is all applied at the VM or VApp level, where when we talk about organization VDCs, we've had these different allocation models that said, I want to apply the resources at that level, but now we're bringing it down to another object. And placement, and this again provides distinct granular control, this allows us that desired state of how do we actually want to place a virtual machine based on some kind of logic parameter. One good example, and one of the reasons uh, this is introduced is uh, licensing requirements. So if I have a specific database that has to be licensed on a set of hosts, I can actually tie it or pin it to a specific set of hosts and it follows or it adheres to this policy on that. So these are some of the new functionality built into the user interface that are now introduced in 10.0. The next thing I wanna kinda of talk about is our backup certica certification. As I've discussed in the past, we've had many different ecosystem partners that have built um, what I'd like to call backup as a service functionality. Now we're certifying some of these from uh, Veeam, uh, Cohesity, Dell uh, Data Protection Services, Commvault, and Rubrik. And what we're doing is providing interoperability with what they're setting from their reference architecture to maybe a vCloud director plugin to interoperability and what they're providing from a functionality perspective. And that's very important when we talk about providing this entire life cycle of capabilities within a multi-tenant cloud platform. The next thing I wanna kinda of talk about is also the appliance. So with 9.7, we introduced the uh, the second iteration of the appliance, and 10.0 essentially grows upon that uh, foundation of the functionality. And within 10.0, we have had, and 9.7, we've had PG SQL or Postgres SQL as a function built into the solution. So we can set a primary instance that runs the uh, instance of the cell along with the database, along with secondary instances that run a synchronous replication or replicate between the uh, primary instance. Moreover, the appliance can continue to scale out based off of a cell state on that, all coming from a single appliance and all tied into uh, the overall platform. Next thing I want to kind of talk about is Kubernetes. So container services extension is our functionality that provides us an on-ramp to uh, containers in a VCD environment. Today, or previously, excuse me, we've had native Kubernetes experience where this is built onto a native virtual machine and backed by NSXV uh, function. Well, with 2.1, we also have now accessibility to PKS or Pivotal Container Services. So this can actually provide a on-ramp to providing this in a dedicated fashion, but using the roles-based access control presented inside of the cloud director. And speaking of another uh, very interesting addition to the cloud director is the object storage services. So object storage services provides us a on-ramp to providing object services to any tenants within the VCD interface. Today, this is backed by Cloudian, but this is using a S3 provider. And you know, one of the great things about working with this is providing on-ramp to additional storage services built into the Cloud Director. And then last two points that I kind of want to mention is I want to talk about Bitnami, which is providing us a catalog of out-of-the-box functionality and applications. And this can be directly integrated into the catalog built into vCloud Director and provide that as a service inside of a vCD context and import those into that catalog. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is the Terraform provider. So the Terraform provider has been updated to allow us to provide infrastructure as code inside of VCD context. So these are some of the just top of mind items that I had uh, with VCD 10.0. There's much more coming out. Definitely go to cloudsolutions.vmware.com, uh, talk to your uh, VMware cloud provider team or your aggregator, and definitely watch out for more. Thanks for watching.